Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Modern Entrepreneurs podcast video series. I'm Monica Garrett, and I am the host of the Modern Entrepreneurs podcast, and I'm the owner of the Margot Agency. I'm excited to share with you our second season of the podcast, and we're going to start including this new bonus um, of the interviews with you, and it's video. I know, it's super exciting. So now you'll get to see our interviews. Um, you'll see the you know how it is unedited pretty much for the most part, um, video interviews um, of the podcast. Now, I know that podcasts are great for when you need to be hands-free and you're most likely doing something else like working out or picking up the kids, or quite honestly, if you're like me, you're probably doing the dishes. But when you have some time and you really wanna connect more with our guests, then these videos are gonna be really special for you. Check them out. Um, today, my guest is Meredith Marsh. Welcome, Meredith. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I'm super stoked to have you here. Um, and so let's just dive into it. So tell me about your business and what do you do? Well, I have a background in web design. I started out as a freelance web designer in about 2008-ish. Okay. And so I did that for about five years, and then I took a job um, working kind of in the corporate environment as an in-house web designer, uh, web marketing manager person. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, at some point I just thought, man, I have like every single skill that I need to just start my own online business. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to just get going? Um, and so... I came up with um, the idea for teaching other, it started out teaching other moms and dads how to capture, you know, their family moments on video and like how to actually edit those videos and actually create something with them and so they don't get lost in the cloud or on a hard drive or something. And so I started a YouTube channel and I do a lot of tutorials for, you know, how to use a GoPro, how to edit videos. Um, and, and stuff like that. And I do still work one-on-one -on -one with clients doing web design and online marketing kind of stuff. Okay. So you have the, the main business is, is Vid Pro Mom, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm so intrigued that you're a web designer initially. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> let's talk about that first. So you started sure. doing web design. Um, is that what you went to school for or kind of um, landed in it. I didn't really go to school for it. My degree is in multidisciplinary studies, which means <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no nothing slash everything at the same time. Um, but I've always enjoyed web design, like, you know, since I was like a kid, uh -huh. you know, when the internet was like invented. <laughs> it's always been fascinating for me. And um, so... Uh, at some point, I was like, why don't I just do that for, like, a job? <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> so I kind of, I mostly, I, I just kind of taught myself everything I needed to know, like, technical-wise. And then um, I just started letting people know that, I, hey, I can make websites, you know. And, I, and people started hiring me. So that's kind of how that started. So you started freelancing outside of the, the job that you had? I started freelancing like from the beginning. So oh. I freelanced for five years. I live in a really small town okay. where, um, which you wouldn't think is conducive to a freelance web design business, but there weren't any other web designers here, but there's a lot of businesses and nonprofits. And, What's the um, town? It's what? called, it's Penyan. Penyon, New York. It's nice. a very small town. Sounds like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's cute. a very rural um, community, but it's we're it, we live in the wine region of upstate New York. So there's a lot of travel and tourism kind of stuff going on. Also, mm -hmm. um, so it worked out that there was organizations and businesses that were like, oh, we have a local person who can do website stuff. And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, we do. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So at that point, did you have a website and were just starting your business as a freelancer and get it going? Um, f yes. I was I mainly focused on web design at that point. I hadn't 
thought anything about Vid Pro Mom or YouTube or anything at that point. Um, in 2013, I, I kind of, I had a really great opportunity to take a full-time job for a local company being their in-house web designer, marketing person. And, uh, it just, it was, it just seemed like an opportunity that I had to take Yeah, uh, because I was getting kind of burnt out working client after client after client. And I was really wanting to learn more about marketing instead of going from like website to website to website. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper in the whole online marketing space. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took that opportunity to work for one company and go a little bit deeper um, with that and learn what I could about marketing and business there. So I was there for three years um, and then they moved their corporate headquarters across the country so I didn't move with them <laughs> <laughs> was that an option or you just um it probably yeah it I guess it was an option but I didn't I really didn't want to mm-hmm. so cool so was it around 2016 that you started doing um the go vid pro yeah I so in at the end of <clears throat> A couple months into working that full-time job, Mm -hmm. I started thinking, like, okay, where is this leading? Because I don't think I'm going to work here until I retire. (laughs) So um, that's sort of um, when I started thinking, like, what what would I do if I started an online business? What would I talk about? What would I sell? What would I teach? Like, what what does this whole thing look like, you know? And... Um, but at the same time, on a personal level, my kids were little, like, I don't know, three, two and five, I guess. And I felt, I felt like, what, what am I doing like family wise? So I had this, I had this, it wasn't a midlife crisis. (laughs) It was some (laughs) sort of a mom entrepreneur crisis because I was like, you know, where, what are we, what's, what are we doing here? So I just happened to have this thought that, um, I really wanted to sort of live more intentionally for myself and for my family. And I just had it in my head that I really just wanted to capture the stuff that we do, uh, in photos and video. And I like photos and video like anyway. So, Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just had it in my head. And then when I bought a GoPro, in like December 2013 and I I'm not an extreme sports enthusiast at all which is like what GoPros are all about (laughs) are they target yeah I I sent my kids outside to go play in the snow and I said oh here let me open up this GoPro like I opened it up and put in the memory card and I sent it out with them and then like by the end of the day we had this really great family video and they were totally amazed by it and I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to teach other people how to do this because it's really easy. But like the the lasting impact of the thing you're creating, you're like reliving that moment, that memory from that day, mm-hmm. like until, you know, the end of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I loved that idea. And it, and it just sort of like the personal side and the entrepreneur side just kind of came together. And I was like, this is what I need to do. So I started planning and and like brainstorming scheming how I was going to <laughs> you know what it was going to be is it going to be a blog is it going to be a website is yeah. it like wh- what is it so I spent about probably most of like 2014 really doing a lot of brainstorming for myself mm-hmm. and um I initially I bought the domain name gopromom.com mm-hmm. um and I started blogging a little bit and set up my social media networks and stuff with GoPro Mom as my name. <laughs> and then um, it wasn't until uh, January 2015 that I started creating regular weekly content okay. um, in the form of YouTube videos. So I did a lot of planning and a lot of um, pre-planning. I didn't just like wake up January 1st and start creating videos. I had shot the videos And edited the videos and stuff so that because I was still working full time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did all that stuff on the weekends and the evenings and all that stuff so that January 1st, I could just start publishing every week. 
And then a couple months into that, GoPro contacted me and they they wanted me to be part of their influencer team. Okay. And I was like, cool, yeah. And they were like, we want you to we want you to give away a couple GoPros and you know, just do it however you want. We'll just just send us let us know who the winners are. And I was like, all right, cool. And then the guy in his email he said but I'm going to recommend that you change your name. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, you don't you don't think I should use GoPro Mom as my brand, right? Uh-huh. And Which I knew. I, I knew that it was a trademark. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, I knew exactly what I was doing. And yet, at the same time, I was like, I'm, I'm still going to do it. I know what the rule <laughs> is, but I'm going to break it for now because I, I just, I, I felt like I needed to. And so... I well, changed it worked everything. out to do it for that. It did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did. Um, yeah, I got their attention. <laughs> <laughs> right? Who's this GoPro mom? <laughs> so I changed it to VidPro mom because I still wanted it to be I, – I wanted the people who knew me as GoPro mom. I, I didn't want it to be that far of a leap, like, what what I changed it to. So I, yeah. I changed it to VidPro mom. So that's where I'm at now. Yeah. No, I think it's a, a fair trade. I mean, I don't know what it is about – how the word pro instantly connects to GoPro. (laughs) But for me, it did. (laughs) I was just like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah." And I guess VidPro helps, but yeah, I totally relate it to a a GoPro focus, at least. So that's Mm -hmm. very cool. So so you were an influencer for them. Are you still an influencer for them? I am on their influencer team, uh, in which... It, it, so many people ask me about that, and I'm like, I don't know what that even means. They send me emails. <laughs> like, they send me emails, like, days after they've made big announcements and press releases to the public, and it's like, yeah, I read the news. Like, why? <laughs> it, and it, so it's, it. I don't know, it's funny. When they launched their new camera last year, the session, they sent one to all of their influencers. And um, they said they were going to send the new ones that they launched this year to all of the influencers, but I haven't seen mine yet, but I still get the influencer emails. So (laughs) when people are like, oh, are you still? I'm like, I don't know if I'm, if I, I, I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) So is that the main incentive that they send you new cameras or they don't pay you otherwise or? Nope. No, I've never been paid um, by them. They they sent me that one session um, camera with a review kit and stuff, and I did a couple of videos on that. And, I mean, I create a lot of GoPro-related content. Um, but, yeah, they don't pay me or anything. It's just I, people ask questions and I answer them, and mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of the gist. I, I never really intended to be GoPro specific. Okay. So, and actually one of my, my big plan for 2017 is to branch out Mm -hmm. because I really want to help, you know, people are recording videos on their iPhones all day long. And then what are they doing with it? Nothing. And that's the whole reason why I started in the first place is to get people to do something with what they're shooting, no matter what they're shooting on. So I'll be branching out from GoPro. I still do a bunch of GoPro tutorials but i'll well, branch out a little bit well even better that your name's VidPro now <laughs> exactly <laughs> there you go well very cool okay so you get into the gopro um aspect and you said you were trying to figure out you know your strategy of what platform you were going to do so did you end up starting it on youtube or you started a blog or just the, the website you did both okay yeah, both. so i was definitely comfortable and familiar with like blogging as a platform so Uh I was like I'm just I'll start a blog but I knew that I had to do video tutorials you can't you know no one's gonna read a blog post to figure out how to edit a video you know you kind of have to see what's going on yeah so I knew I was gonna have to create video tutorials so I did a lot of did a lot of sort of research and practice and how I was going to do my videos, but I didn't intend to be like a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I just thought I was going to be a blogger who did videos and I had to post them somewhere. So you, you must put them on YouTube because YouTube and Google are the same company. So if you want to be found, you know, you need to be there. Um, and then 
but the platform for me really grew like it, that's where my readership and people and email opt-ins were coming from was from YouTube. So yeah. I've sort of slowly over the last two years, like just slowly changed my thinking from being a blogger who also is on YouTube to being a YouTuber who also has a blog. So I, I try to think more like a YouTuber because um, that's that's where the eyeballs are are coming from that's how they're yeah. finding me yeah so how so if you have a video that you're posting on youtube how do you do you translate that to the blog as like transcripted or just like um, a I default you always any... have the blog post to match or yeah yeah i always okay. do and um i shouldn't say always but 99.9 <laughs> percent of the time usually what i do when i'm prepping a piece of content is i write like I'm writing a blog post and I wait, I just, I guess I naturally sort of tend to write the way that I talk anyway. Yeah. So it's, I, so I basically, I have a blog post and then when I record the video, I kind of just use that. I don't read like a script, but I kind of use it to kind of riff off of it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I have them both, but they're not, the videos aren't transcribed, um, which they should be, but I don't, I don't, I just don't spend the time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole nother beast in itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you find more people are interested in the video YouTube than the blog post of it, right? Yes. For the most part. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Um, all right. So when, um, so I, I have so many questions. <laughs> like, <you> focus. <laughs> when did the business start to become not even profitable, but a money maker. Like how, at what point did you start thinking, okay, now this is a business and I'm making money off doing this? Mm. Um, I should, I should give you a disclaimer that I like, <laughs> I don't make a livable wage off okay. of vid pro mom. <laughs> okay. That's good to my, know. Yeah. Most, most of my business income comes from working with clients one on one, doing websites and stuff like that. Okay. So um, that's sort of my big focus for 2017 is to look at the things for Vidpro Mom that do bring in income, and spend my time doing those things instead of the things that don't bring in income. Yeah. So um, yeah. So but I so my income comes from like AdSense. Because I have, you know, the ads that play um, before my YouTube videos, and I have some ads on my website, but not a lot, because I really hate ads on websites. Mm -hmm. um, and um, an Amazon affiliate. Um, so from the beginning, though, I if I was going to put a link anywhere mm -hmm. in my YouTube description or in my blog posts, if it was if it was going to Amazon, it was an affiliate link always. And so. Um, I've just kind of, I've just always kind of had the intention to make money where I could make money mm -hmm. um, from the beginning. So, and then, so, but last year, after about, I would say about like nine months into um, posting regularly on YouTube, and, and I was building up my email list the whole time, um, that I, cause I had the intention from the beginning, like I should create a course. I should do this YouTube stuff and all that, get people on my email list and then launch a course. Cause that's yeah. what everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> and they make that's money the apparently. That's, that's yeah. what you do. Um, and so that, that's when I started thinking like, okay, well, what course am I going to create? And I, so what I did was I created a course for um, how to edit videos in GoPro Studio, okay. which is GoPro's video editing platform. And that's most of like the questions that I was getting from people were on that platform. And it's funny because I, m some of my first videos were tutorials on how to edit in GoPro Studio because I noticed there weren't a whole lot of tutorials on YouTube for that. And the reason I think for that is because it's not that great of an editing platform. Like there's so many options out there. Mm -hmm. But when people who don't know how to edit videos buy a GoPro, they're automatically like, oh, I'll use GoPro Studio. Yeah. So 
um, they, they try it out and then they don't know how to use it and then they search Google and then they find me. And so it just, it cracks me up that like the, nobody was making tutorials cause they were like, well, I don't use GoPro studio. And I was thinking, I don't use it either, but people <laughs> want to learn about it. So I'm going to start using it and showing them how to, That's how to perfect. use it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I created a course that launched last, uh, February ish. Okay. So, um, and then what I, I ended up kind of turning that into a master class. So it's not as big of a course. Okay. Um, it's a, it's most of the same material, but just condensed down, um, into more like bite sized chunks kind of. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm looking at one right here. You have the GoPro studio master class. Yeah. And that's so, $27. And that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems so low. <laughs> it is. It is. But the course that I launched to begin with was a hundred dollars. Oh, okay. So, um, and it, when I launched it, it, I, it was, it was successful to me, like in my eyes mm-hmm. at the time that I launched it, this was still my like thing that I did on, on the weekends yeah. and evenings. Yeah. It wasn't my full-time job. So, um, it was successful to me, but then it didn't sell real well as an evergreen product. It really? sold really well as a as a launched thing to my list. They were like, "Yeah, we want this," and they bought it. And then, but then, I had a really hard time selling it as people were signing up to my list and getting them into my funnel. And then, really, so mm-hmm. yeah, so I just sort of I changed it and adapted it and tried different things, webinars and things like that. Um, and I think I've hit kind of the sweet spot here where it's a smaller course. You're still getting the same, not the same amount of information. Cause I mean, you can't take a hundred dollar course and just call it $27 mm-hmm. and not remove some of <laughs> yeah, the totally. features and benefits. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, so, but the great thing is though, that I can take the same exact curriculum and create a masterclass for literally any other editing platform. So I have another masterclass for Premiere Elements. Um, I use Premiere Pro for my YouTube videos, mm-hmm. but people who are just learning how to edit videos, they don't need to to use Premiere Pro. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Um, so I can create other masterclasses for all the other different um, editing platforms. So that's what I'll be doing um, throughout 2017. Very cool. So um, when you say this was successful to you, what does that mean exactly? Like how many people were on the list to the ratio of how many people bought maybe? Um, Oh, that's a good question. I'll have to rack my brain. (laughs) Um, I had a, I had, I I had 996 people on the list because I round up to a thousand. I say it was a thousand, but it was 996. (laughs) And probably a handful of them were just me and my alternate email addresses. <laughs> nice. um, and so it was like, I think it ended up being like 0.1, 0.12% or something uh-huh. that bought the course. It was either 0.1 or 1. Now I need to do my, I need to do some math. <laughs> but um, 1,000 times 1,000. Uh, no. I don't know what it was now, but I had <laughs> about 24 people by the end of the launch that had purchased the course. Cool. So um, I was happy with that because my goal was 10. So Nice. Yeah. And the time and effort to create the course, was that really intensive? Um, It was. Cause it, it was. And what I did was I... I launched it so that there was four modules and then within each module there was like five to seven different video lessons. And so I did it so that those modules weren't created yet when I launched it. So if you bought the course, you would get module one and then next week you would get module two because I hadn't created module two yet. So um, it wasn't like I didn't create this whole big course and then launch it. I created the idea for the course and launched it and then that's what I hear everybody does or at least recommends yeah so 
Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's what I did there. And I did the same thing with, um, I just wrapped up a premier elements masterclass, um, that I did the same thing. I, I didn't really create the videos until people got into the course and then I rolled it out week after week. So, Very cool. um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not as intensive as doing a YouTube video because it was mostly just tutorials um, not with my face, it was just my computer screen. So I didn't have to be all, you know, makeup and hair and <laughs> nice. I know that's such a problem. It's like, <laughs> I have to like get ready. The whole point of being an entrepreneur at home was like, I don't have to get ready. <laughs> now we do. <laughs> very cool. So let's talk about sort of, let's talk about GoPro. Like I'm not very familiar with the camera and what's the difference and you recommending using this to capture memories or capture things versus a regular camera or your camera phone. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, the GoPro is waterproof. Okay. And That's a it's huge thing. Almost, <laughs> it's almost practically crash proof. So if it's, if, if it's in its waterproof housing, it's like very protected. So, uh, I feel like parenting is kind of, like the most extreme sport there is. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, um, you know, so it just, it made sense. And I, it was almost like a whim that I just was like, I'm going to buy a GoPro. And I, and I just like did. And it was probably, I probably bought it on like Cyber Monday or something. Um, so what's their average it was price just, ranges for those? Um, I paid, I think three ninety nine for mine at the time. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's the price of their current, like, the hero five, which is the newest, okay. the newest one. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I just thought we needed an actual camera, not just our phone cameras. Um, and so it, I mean, it worked out and my, the first time that we used it, when I sent the kids to play in the snow, we got like a foot of snow and it was a Saturday. So it was just like, here, just put your stuff on and go outside and play. And I, I went out there and set the GoPro on the bumper of my husband's truck because the kids were like sledding and my older daughter was pulling my younger daughter in the sled. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this will be a good angle. This will be cool. And my older daughter didn't know that the, the camera was on the truck because they're small. They're like, it's a small camera. Yeah. yeah. Um, she didn't know that it was sitting there recording them. And she walked by and her arm swung. She knocked it off. Oh. Had no idea. No idea that it, that she even touched it because she didn't know it was there. And then she dragged the sled over top of the camera <laughs> in the snow. Wow. And it was like, and so I, so I was inside at that point. I came back out. And the camera was not on the bumper of the truck. And I was like, where's the camera? She's like, what, what camera? And I'm like, the camera that was sitting here. It's no longer here. And she was like, I don't know. So I dug in the snow and it was in the snow. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? So I, but it seemed to be fine and it was still recording. So I brought it inside. So when I looked at the footage and I saw what happened and you can like, you, the camera falls and you can hear the sled going <laughs> like over top of the camera <laughs> through the snow. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, wow. So you can't do that with a cell phone. You can't do that with a fancy DSLR camera or yeah. a point and shoot camera. You can only do that with a GoPro camera and still have it survive yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I was definitely sold um at that point and I was like this is this is a great family camera because I can just like throw it at them and say here just press <laughs> yeah. record Very so cool. and it's so yeah it's waterproof we throw it in the pool with the kids and um it's it's worked out great yeah that seems pretty great for families yeah like, with kids yeah. yeah that's awesome um so my only experience I want to say at least that I can think of is that it looks sort of like a fisheye lens yeah is that mm -hmm. standard or is that yes, like it standard does. GoPro look or whatever yeah it does have that signature kind of GoPro look <laughs> um and there are different uh 
there's different settings that make it more wide angle or less wide angle. Okay. But the newest um, GoPros have a linear format where, like, in the camera, it automatically removes that fisheye oh. as you're recording. So, because you can remove fisheye when you're editing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now if, you, if you're shooting in that linear format, it will just do it for you automatically. Very cool. So when you give it to your kids to play and stuff, um, do they wear it or do they just hold it? Or how are they sort of filming oh. the situation? Oh, <laughs> Both, <anything>. yeah. <laughs> um, we have worn it on our heads. Um, we went on a Disney cruise a couple years ago. Uh, we went on two, and, and there's a big slide that goes around like the outside of the cruise ship, and uh, so we wore it on our heads for that. Um, so, which that's actually a good a good tip if you wear it on a water slide where you have like a tube with two people. Mm-hmm. If you put the GoPro on your head but put it backwards, then you can shoot the person behind you. Oh, there you go. So we did that. <laughs> yeah, we did that. <laughs> so I actually have really great footage of the GoPro facing behind me. And there's like, we're in line and there's a guy like two people back with a GoPro on his head shooting in front of him. And it was like, I didn't realize that there was a guy back there who also had a GoPro on his head until I got home and looked at the footage. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> that guy has a- <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, we wear it on our heads. We have a, a handle, um, like a floating um, handle. So like the... Um, like a selfie stick top, looking thing kind of thing? Kind of like, yeah, but it's not as long. Oh, okay. um, the GoPros have... Um, the new GoPros have two different um, microphones, but m- for the most part, the microphones are on the top right mm-hmm. here. You probably can't see. So if you that. don't have it in a case or something, mm-hmm. then your fingers are going to be right by the microphone, and it's gonna you're gonna so hear. Muffled, yeah. Yeah. So let me um, see that. We again. always that is so tiny. Yeah. So this is the Hero Three Plus. It's not the brand new one. It's not even, Wow. it's like, it's old. This one's old. <laughs> this one's three years old. Three years old? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it still works great. I don't even, it's, I have no complaints So um, what's about the it. process of taking that to be um, edited? Is it just a USB cord or some something like that? Well, there's a memory. There's a memory, a card. memory. Okay. Yeah. It's a micro SD card. And it's oh, okay. teeny tiny. Mm-hmm. It's like the size of a thumbnail. No. Oh, there's my camera. Oh, yeah. It's tiny. And so you just put it in a, um, there's a. Adapter. Like an adapter. So this mm-hmm. is like a regular size memory card and you just put it in. So you can put it in your computer like that or you can, there's a cord that you can connect it also. Okay. Yeah. I think I have an adapter USB thing that can fit that memory card in my laptop mm-hmm. maybe. Or maybe yeah. this one. I don't know. Very cool. Okay. So I want to see how this can sort of relate to helping people in their business as well. Um, my first thought was with realtors and maybe filming, you know, homes or something or the neighborhood. What are your thoughts on like some, some approaches they could do with using the GoPro? Yeah. So, um, for real estate, the fact that it has a wide angle is definitely a benefit because if you're taking a picture of a room, mm-hmm. you're kind of you're kind of stuck in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so it's good to have a wide angle, and I, and a lot of you know professional real estate photographers often will use a wide angle um, with their fancy cameras. So mm-hmm. the GoPro just already has that. Um, the downside of a GoPro though is that it needs a lot of natural light. Okay. Um, cause it's an action camera. It's like really made to be outside. Mm-hmm. Um, so that can be a downside. Um, but for shooting outdoor shots, you know, it would be great. Um, and like you said, neighborhood shots and of course drones are very popular right now for yeah. real estate, <clears throat> um, photography, but there's some limitations there because the FAA gets involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar um, so, with using drones and how that works at all? I I don't have a drone, and I I I would say I'm mildly familiar with it. I'm familiar enough to know that um, you really have to follow the rules. 
<laughs> and so there's you can you can fly a drone as a hobbyist, but if you're going to do something commercial like real estate photos, you have to have your commercial drone pilot's license. So you have to take a test and stuff like that. Drone pilot license. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's so serious. <laughs> so yeah. the drone, it is. You know, there's... Go ahead. The drone what? I was going to say the drone. It's just like a... Think of it like a claw, and then your camera goes into it, right? So you would right. intend, well, like, yeah. put a GoPro or something into your drone and then fly yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like a claw with wings. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so intense. Very cool. Yeah, I was thinking the something with the neighborhoods and a GoPro would be really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And that's outdoors. So that might be the best bet for using that. And like you said, indoor lighting is really hard. I used to shoot some interior shots for a local magazine. And yeah, lighting is everything. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> oh, man. Very cool. <clears throat> So aside from maybe um, new videos and maybe course launches, like what else do you see um, growing your business um, in 2017? Like any new strategies that you're going to do or new things that you're going to explore? Um, I would say the biggest new thing for me is that I'll be publishing more videos on YouTube. So instead of once a week, It'll probably be three times a week or at least to start just to try out because there's more there there. I have a list of like 300 topics I would like to to cover. (laughs) So if I have once a week, that's only 52 videos. So um, it's a lot of work, but there's there's I feel like I have a I feel like I have a lot to say. So I have to. I have to get it out there. So um, I'll be doing a, like probably a weekly video still kind of in line with what I've been doing. So GoPro tutorials, family videos, hobby, hobby videos, video editing, um, and then some that are kind of, I, I guess you could describe them as behind the scenes business wise. Like, um, cause one thing I don't talk about at all, or that VidPro mom doesn't talk about <laughs> at all is the whole like online marketing, website stuff, email marketing, like all that really nerdy stuff that I'm doing every day as VidPro mom. I'm but VidPro mom is not talking about it. But I have a lot of people asking me um, about my website and about like this and that and do you use this and what what do you recommend and it's all businessy related kind of stuff so mm-hmm. i'll be doing those tutorials on that and kind of how kind of how vidpro mom runs i guess you could say and then um and i'll probably do more um tech reviews like as it pertains to video related stuff and um and things like that like i i mean it's like i have an apple watch that i've had for a year Mm -hmm. and it's not related to shooting videos it's not related to running my business but i'd like to do a video on like what's my thoughts on using an apple watch for the last year yeah that's a tech review yeah that's a tech review and i and so i have to sometimes i'm like but meredith you're not a tech reviewer and i'm just (laughs) like yeah but you could be like, there's no reason why you can't. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. And if people yeah. are interested, then you, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, so you were saying you, a, a lot of the behind the scenes, which I know, and I'm familiar with as well as the marketing and stuff. How much of that um, is in your day to day with running your business? How much marketing is in my day to day? Like the behind the scenes, not necessarily oh. content creating. Well, I mean, every day. <laughs> Are you doing this full time for one, I guess, is the first question. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so I know I don't have a full time job anymore. So I do VidPro Mom and, you know, the website stuff full time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, every every day. Every day is is All a behind the scenes day. day. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What are some of your favorite um, or best tools for marketing your business that has worked for um, VidPromom? 
tools for marketing my business? Well, YouTube, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as far as marketing, um, Facebook has done really well for me. I have a Facebook group called GoPro Enthusiasts, um, which um, which is just for GoPro enthusiasts. <laughs> so, uh, Perfect. Um, that's been really a really great way to attract new um, eyeballs, I guess you could say, because people. I guess people go to Facebook and search for GoPro groups to join <laughs> and I'm one of them. So, um, that's been really great for me. Um, I think Mark, I think Facebook groups are kind of like one of the big new things like marketing wise these days. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was glad to sort of jump on that bandwagon before it was as big of a bandwagon as it is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. guess. <laughs> and um, I do do a lot of email marketing and I use ConvertKit for that, which I love. And um, are you big on Instagram or I use Instagram, but uh, I love Instagram, but I, I struggle with with like I struggle with posting. Yeah, I'll, I'll use Instagram stories all day long, but then I won't <laughs> post something for like two weeks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the video part of it you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so do you have any advice for anybody else um, wanting to start, you know, a YouTube channel or really trying to get an audience um, on YouTube? Um. Oh, man, that's a good question. I have a lot of advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's it's a it's a tricky thing for for me. I am not a video like an on video on camera person at <laughs> all. I had no experience being on camera, talking to a camera. Um, I didn't like lay awake at night dreaming of seeing my face on a screen somewhere I was like <laughs> I'm I'm total introvert but I knew that in order to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish teaching people how to create awesome videos that I was going to have to do that mm -hmm. and so I kind of went full force with it and tried not to do it halfway but do it you know go all in on it um and I think the fear of being on camera is a huge, huge challenge for people that I think the sooner you get over it and just like pull the bandaid off, like the more yeah. comfortable you're going to be. And now I find that I really enjoy it. And um, a couple months ago, I had to send my camera away to get fixed and it was gone for like three weeks. And I was like, I really want my camera to be back because you kind of miss making videos. I had to shoot a video on my cell phone, which is totally doable and possible. But I like having my, my DSLR camera. I used the Canon 70D. Um, and I really missed it. And I was like, <laughs> what is wrong with me that I actually, how did I go from, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be on camera to actually missing being on camera. And it's the, it's the, getting the message out there that I missed, mm -hmm. you know, so the camera is just a, a great tool for that. And so YouTube is, is also a great tool for that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I myself, am trying to rip that bandaid off and, <laughs> um, just do more video in 2017. I just, it's going to be all video. <laughs> I mean, not all video, yeah. but like, I just need to really get into it, get comfortable and just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I think that's the hardest part too. I, I overthink and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs or other people just like build it up. Like it's a, something a little bit more intense than it needs to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and maybe um, Instagram stories is a nice little leeway into that because you're just you and your camera and you're organically doing your thing. You're not worrying about too much. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. Instagram stories and Snapchat stories is, I mean, that's basically, you are vlogging. If you're doing Snapchat and Instagram stories, you're mm -hmm. already doing it. You're talking to the camera. And then when you sound stupid, you say, nope, redo. <laughs> and it, I mean, that's what that's, there's a lot of editing that happens in my YouTube videos. Um, and that and without it, I, 
nobody would be like watching my video. <laughs> <laughs> But you can you can do all that with you know with Instagram stories and Snapchat stories. Facebook Live is a whole other beast because you cannot edit that as you go. You just have to <laughs> embrace your weird the way that you just like fumble on your words. Just have to roll with it. <laughs> and the still shots, you get like three to choose from. It's like, oh man, <laughs> I did a few Facebook Lives. And I think one day I was wearing like dark lipstick or it just was not flattering. And I was like, oh, that's staying there. Okay. And I needed to keep it because it was good content. But I was like, (laughs) that was an off day for me. (laughs) But well, very cool. Is there anything you want to add? I don't think so. I other than just, you know, if anybody has, you know, any interest in creating hobby videos, family videos, you know, even YouTube videos, then look me up vidpromom yeah vidpromom.com it, and uh mm-hmm. what's your youtube channel it's called vidpromom but the url is gopromom because that can't be changed so oh, there's I hate there. that <laughs> it's all right I, it's like a little it's a little badge of honor of like that one time when i <laughs> broke the rules on purpose <laughs> <laughs> very cool well, tell us about your podcast too. What is it, and uh, oh yeah, what you got going on there? Yeah, it's called the Vid- it's called the VidPro Studio Show Podcast. Um, it's like the name of my company technically is VidPro Studio. So, um, I basically I just wanted to talk to people about video, and not like not how to do video necessarily, but I just wanted to kind of pick the brains of. Um, YouTubers and vloggers and, you know, stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, I started a podcast and it's on iTunes and Stitcher and and all that stuff where you can get to it by going to vidprostudio.com. Very cool. Well, awesome. Well, let's check that out. And uh, I'm excited to make some videos. I'm actually really leaning towards this GoPro because I have a two year old, two and a half year old daughter. And just the other day, she was jumping in the leaves, and that would have been a good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, well, very cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right.